Othello, Omaha, Nebraska, yeah. a very different kind of market than New York yeah. or the Bay Area. Um, dead center in the country. Tell us a little bit about Omaha and your work. Um, so thank you for having me. Uh, this is really a joy. I'm up here with two um, of the most influential people on my view uh, of community development and empowerment. So it's uh, kind of a, a thrill to be up here with these two. Uh, and Dave, who's awesome. <laughs> who's awesome. So, but I mean, I think Dave will join me in, in, in my assessment. Um, so Omaha is, um, uh, I think it's unique to people on the coast. I think it's familiar to people in the middle, right? So if you've been to Kansas City, if you've been to Milwaukee, if you've been to Des Moines, if you've been to any of these other mid-sized Midwestern cities, it's probably very familiar to you. Um, we have oftentimes a very different set of challenges than people on the coast or in kind of hotter markets uh, have. We are always in the mode of trying to attract investment in neighborhoods. Um, uh, we, Our neighborhood is a neighborhood that has been long, long, long forgotten, uh, despite being a mile from downtown. Uh, and so our, our challenge is always, how do you attract investment, but how do you do that in an equitable way, right? How do you not put that train on the track, right, uh, and let it get out of control? Um, but how do you do that in a way that ensures that the, the, the benefits of increased investment accrue to everybody? Uh, so that feels like kind of our most acute challenge from a real estate or, or housing uh, perspective. We are disciples of the uh, purpose-built model. Our focus is in three main areas. We are really working hard to build a cradle-to-college educational pipeline, starting at birth and taking kids all the way through college. Um, we work very hard at the mixed-income uh, housing model. Really think that is, um, and it, you know, and I think sometimes that's a harder uh, discussion than it needs to be. Um, I was a little bit surprised by that. I, I have been surprised by that, um, but that is a core tenet of this model, and we 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 hold strong to that. Uh, and then the last part is this idea of community health and wellness, which is a really big bucket, uh, encompasses everything from your actual health and wellness to uh, economic mobility to financial literacy to um, the housing that we build and how that affects uh, our residents. Uh, when we first started, our site, the neighborhood we work in, um, and I'm sure this is like many other neighborhoods, um, if you go to Omaha right now and you ask somebody where Pleasant View is, um, Pleasant View was the name of the public housing project that was on our site before our our uh, development. Uh, and we've worked really hard when you think about public spaces and, and places in general and 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 the terminology, the, the, the nomenclature we use when we describe those places. So the neighborhood has a historic name. It's called Highlander. Uh, but because it had become so synonymous with the projects, uh, that became the dominant narrative about that place. Uh, and so we work really hard on on trying to help people understand that there was a history before the projects, right? There was uh, a, 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 an entire story that happened before uh, 1954 when the projects were built on, on the near north side. So um, our work really focuses on trying to, to, to attract this investment and trying to uh, do these catalytic product, projects in neighborhoods where you really have an opportunity to kind of be out at the front. Right, we are. Um, I tell people all the time, like Omaha is behind the curve, um, and that works for us right now. Right, if you look at the site, the site that we built our our first phase of development on, it's on 23 acres of of beautiful land with a beautiful view. That's why the projects were called Pleasant View, uh, and it's a mile from downtown. Had we been in any other city, right, or had we been on pace with the curve. Right, we would have never got our hands on 23 acres, contiguous acres, right in the middle of the city. Right, so I mean, I know we're sitting in New York, and nobody can fathom 23 contiguous acres in the, you know, close to anything. Um, but you know, we have that opportunity, but it creates a different, a different challenge, which is uh, if a part of your city is forgotten about, and people don't have a reason or places that draw them to that, to that neighborhood, how do you create that? which is a weird thing. I feel like I'm telling my staff all the time with almost every project, whether it's capital or, or program, that we are trying to create energy, right? We're trying to bring energy to this neighborhood uh, in a lot of ways, right? In terms of the way the neighborhood sees itself, uh, in terms of just foot traffic, right? So businesses can thrive. Uh, but it's a very different challenge than a lot of other places have uh, kind of across this, the, uh, the nation. And, you know, one of the things that, 
complicates that, and Shirley alluded to it. You know, the hard part is really being in the room, hashing these things out, and then very quickly in those spaces you realize. I mean, I think people from those communities are they grew up knowing this. People understand that these neighborhoods are not monoliths. I think from outside they're viewed as monoliths, but when you get inside, when you get in a community meeting, right, and you think that everybody here is very liberal and, and very um, open to all these different ideas, and then you get in a neighborhood meeting in North Omaha or North Minneapolis or other places I work, and you realize that the spectrum of views and diversity of opinions is as broad and wide in those places as it is anywhere else. And that's where, I think Shirley's point is right on, that's where the real work begins, right? You think you're going to walk into this room and everybody's going to be like, okay, we're on the same page. And and it's not. And if you do that, I feel like you're just as guilty of painting these communities with the same brush and thinking that it's just this monolithic kind of group think type stereotype. So um, we work really hard to kind of stay out of that and to get down into the weeds of, you know, we got to hash this out. Right, and we got to get together um, on this problem or on these issues, uh, recognizing that everybody's going to come at it from a different way. So, Osella, could you tell us a little bit of just about the accelerator? I'm not, yeah. that's just such a cool project within your larger project. Yeah, you know, so this idea of creating energy, we are in a neighborhood that literally had 2,000 people gone almost overnight when the projects were torn down. So, you're trying to create a space that is communal you're trying to create a space that um that brings people together we created kind of a mini campus um uh right in the middle of our housing development that hosts that houses a a a community college satellite campus a satellite campus for creighton university which is a four-year jesuit institution in omaha uh we have an entrepreneurial uh um, kind of a food-based hub for entrepreneurs uh our offices are there we have an event space, which somebody mentioned before, talking about things that come directly from the community. We, I, I had no intention on building a, an event space in our neighborhood until I sat down and people were saying, we got to get married in these like little, so I don't know if you guys have social halls on the East Coast or the West Coast, but with eight foot ceilings and they smell like mothballs and right, people are like, <laughs> you know, we want a nice place to do these things. Um, and those things came directly from uh, the community. We have a coffee shop that is owned and operated by a North Omaha resident, North High graduate, um, and I'm missing something else. But it's, it's, it's a place that we designed and created to try and bring people together, primarily serving the people from our neighborhood, but also really welcoming people from outside our neighborhood and all over the city. So. Thanks. Some of the photos, by the way, that are um, showing in the background here, um, some of them are from Omaha, but they're from around the Purpose Built Communities Network. 